Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and staying healthy. In today's video, I'm going to be answering the question, what is an egg tree? For those of you who are stopping by here for the first time, my name is Benikai. I'm a full-time actuarial professional and I'm studying to become an actuary. I post videos about actuarial life, actuarial studies, pregnancy and postpartum, hair and a whole lot of other general topics. If you're interested in watching more of that, then please click the subscribe button below. I'd really appreciate it if you did that. So, without wasting any more time, let's get straight into today's video. Most of the time when I tell people that I'm an actuarial specialist, they look at me like, wait, what, you, you're a what now? Some people have genuinely never heard the words actuary or actuarial science. And for those who have, they generally tend to have their own definition of what an actuary is. So if some people hit you with the, oh, you're really good with math. I, I know exactly what that is. You do lots of math. Or they'll hit you with the, oh, you must be so rich. Or the, you're so smart. Or one of my personal favorites, I am a doctor of math. But if I'm being honest, none of that actually says what an actuary does or what an actuary is. I'm going to tell you right now that an actuary is a fortune teller. If you take away the crystal ball to look into the future and you replace that with tons of data and knowledge of probability, and I think you might also want to replace the creepy ambiance with power suits and PowerPoint presentations, and then if we switch out the person who's seeking to have their fortune told and replace that with a boardroom full of suits that are trying to make a decision and they're looking to this one actuary to tell them what thing is the right thing to do, then yeah, you've pretty much got that an actuary is a fortune teller. So by all this, I'm sure you've already picked up that an actuary is a person who tries to predict the future using past data. That's the real more toned down definition of what an actuary is. So there are actually six mainstream fields in which actuaries can work. That's your life insurance, general insurance, health insurance, pensions and other benefits, finance and investment, and enterprise and risk management. And in each of those fields, actuaries are needed to place a dollar figure on certain future events that affect those particular field. And that means actuaries are needed to determine the price to charge for whatever insurance services are being provided. They're needed to help the insurance company decide how much money they need to have today for them to be able to pay all the claims to all the people whose money they've taken in premiums. Actuaries help to determine how much money you need to pay into your pension fund on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis, for you to be able to retire on a certain amount in the future. And that's just to mention a few examples. I am actually studying to be a general insurance actuary and that type of actuary deals with all your non-life insurance. So that's insurance for your car, your house, your business, your planes, if you own planes, your ships, if you own them, you know, and just like general things that people just think of insuring, your crops, your, whatever it is that you think of that is not life or health. It falls under my jurisdiction. It's actually quite broad and I think I'll do a video on the different types of actuaries that exist sometime in the future. Right now I just want to give you a deeper example of the kind of work that an actuary would do in a general insurance setting. So let's say we have a company that wants to start selling motor insurance. Then the first thing that we're going to need is a premium which is the price at which we want to sell this insurance to people. So the actuary is going to look at all the past data to do with this kind of business and that helps them to determine what kind of premium they're going to charge. And whilst we're doing this, we have to make sure that the price we're charging a person is for the type of cover that they need nothing more and nothing less. So for example, with motor insurance, you've got your different levels of cover. There's the third party cover, which is just where if you've caused an accident and you're responsible, you're going to be given money to pay to the other person that you've caused damage to, whether it's for their car, their house, or you've injured them physically. That money that the insurance is going to pay you is not for you to fix the dents on your car or to fix your car. It's for you to hand over to the other person so that they fix what they need to fix. So that insurance has to be cheaper than the kind of insurance where 
it covers your damage as well and it covers your car if it's stolen or it's damaged by fire those are all different levels and different premiums that an actuary needs to determine so to get that price we feed all this data into something that we call a generalized linear model and that's just a model that explains the relationship between different elements of the data and the insurance premium that we determine so that's how your age affects the premium how the type of car affects the premium the age of the car the type of engine that it has and all those things that they ask you when you're filling out your insurance purchase form all that is what then affects the type of premium that you're going to pay so as you can imagine yes it involves a lot of number crunching but the number crunching is not everything once the premium comes out you then have to bring in your actuarial judgment as they call it and that's where you then say this is the premium that I've gotten by just applying the pure maths but does it make sense based on like the environment that I'm operating in is it gonna make sense for me to sell this insurance at this price when budget insurer X is selling it at such a discounted price it's then up to you to figure out if you're going to discount to where they are or you're thinking that your product is going to attract those customers away from budget insurer eggs. So what I've just explained to you is just literally scratching the surface. There is so much that actuaries can do and it all varies depending on the line of work and the field that they're in. Okay, that kind of felt like a lecture and maybe I went a little too deep right there. But I hope that that gave you a greater appreciation of what an actuary is and what an actuary does. Thank you so much for watching. On the right here, you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. On the left here, you can watch another one of my videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.